All right. So, down further. All right. So, um, here we go with the next iteration of the gas laws. And uh, yeah, we're gonna dive right back in through the do now. Um, first, we have what factors of gases does Bull's law relate? Oh, volume, volume, volume. And pressure. pressure and volume. P1, V1 equals P2, V2 was the equation that relates it. Real quick, all, all eyes on me, all eyes on me, please. All eyes on me, all eyes on me, all eyes on me, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. You don't need a computer right now. You don't need a computer for any reason. Okay, so eyes on me right now. If pressure goes up, what happens to volume? What happens if volume goes up? Okay, good. So those are inverses. I will say inversely proportional. What about um, Charles' law? What does it relate? Temperature and volume. So that if temperature goes up, what happens to the volume? It goes up. So if pressure and volume are inversely proportional, what do we say about Charles then? between volume and temperature. They're directly proportional. I will say directly proportional. What units does temperature need to be in when we calculate it at all? Kelvin. It needs to be in Kelvin. Um, what factors of gases does Gay-Lussac's law relate? Pressure and time. I mean, pressure and temperature in this case. Right, pressure and temperature are what, what kind of relationship do they have? Uh, they, they directly What'd you say? There we go. Reuse one of the other two earlier. Directly proportional. I won't say directly proportional. So that the same equation is revealed in that regard. What do you all what what do you think if we considered all three laws at the same time? What do you think that would do? Maybe. But wouldn't it just relate instead of four variables at a time? Wouldn't it relate? Six, a P1, a V1, a T1, a P2, a V2, and a T2. So yesterday we looked at three equations, Boyles, Charles, Daly, Sachs. Today we're going to look at the second equation is actually a combo of all three. The first one we're going to look at is Dalton's law. Now Dalton's law really and truly doesn't I don't think it needs much explanation. I can probably just go post through the slides here. Um, but it's, it's kind of wild. That if we take a gas of a certain pressure, helium, in one tank, and gas of another pressure, argon, because if you're not here, you argon. Um, if we take, and that's of another pressure, this is crazy. If we add those gases to the same container, their pressures also add up. <gasps> what? Isn't that shocking? Like you put two gases of their, of their own independent pressures together, and they maintain their independent pressures, but they add up as, as a total. Wow. Right? I mean, is that not, it's not, sho it's, it's not shocking really that. The partial pressure, this is called partial pressure. I will say partial pressure. I will say Dalton's law of partial pressure. Everyone say Dalton's law of partial pressure. It says that the pressure of each gas in the mixture can be added together to get the total gas. Is the pressure the gas would exert if it were by itself? So look, a gas maintains whatever its individual pressure is. It doesn't blend pressures. So one gas of one pressure maintains its pressure when added to a container of another gas of another pressure. This is somewhat interesting because normally pressure goes from high to low. So you think they blend. Temperature blends, right? If I put a hot piece of metal into cold water, what would happen to the water? It'd warm up. What would happen to the metal? It'd cool down, right? We, we, can, we can see this that temperature blends no matter what the materials are. But for whatever reason, gases don't blend their pressures. Each gas maintains its pressure. Everyone say each gas maintains its pressure. Each gas maintains its pressure. Okay, that's Dalton's law of partial pressure. And then if you added, if you had that gas's independent pressure separately and then added together, it would add together in total pressure. It indicates that pressure depends on the total number of gas particles, not in the type. So type does not matter. I'm going to say type doesn't matter. 
The total pressure exerted in a mixture is the sum of the partial pressures. This is crazy. The total pressure is equal to each of the parts. Wait a minute. So the, the total mass of students of the, uh, you know, of, of the class is equal to the addition of all of the objects that have mass. Whoa. So if I took all the things that have mass in this class and added them up together, we'd get a total mass that's equal to the total mass. I know. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. Oh. Okay. That's part. That's Dalton's law of partial pressure. From the equation, or from your half sheet, you can see the equation is just p total is p one plus p two plus p three plus so on and so forth. So, for example, these two helium pressure and argon pressure. Helium has two. Argon has four. If we add them to the same container, what's their total pressure? Six, because four and two makes six. six. Wow. I know. Wow. 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 It also occupies the same volume. Any mole of a gas occupies the same volume. That's the molar volume of gases. This is 22.4 liters. So one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. Everyone say one mole of any gas, mole of any gas. occupies, uh, occupies, 22.4 liters or 22.4 cubic decimeters. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, what if I take, okay, Boyle's law, Jacques Charles law, and Joseph Louis Gay Lussac law. And um, we had, so whenever we look at PV, Boyle's law, we said temperature and moles are constant. Whenever we looked at VT, we said pressure and moles are constant. Whenever we looked at PT, we said volume and moles are constant. What if volume is not constant? What if we take this one and volume is not constant? What if we look at this one and pressure is not constant? What if we look at that one and temperature is not constant? Uh-oh. Now we have an equation that involves all three. Crazy town. Wow. It's called the combo gas law and involves manipulating all of the features at one time. Now, we're going to do a practice Dalton's Law problem just, just to show you how, how simple and basic it is. But first, I want to introduce the combo gas law and do a practice problem. Hardest part is identifying the variables. We have to just say what each variable is. We have to be able to say it's one or two. Pressure, volume, or temperature, one or two. We just, that's the hardest part. So in the combo law, also in that note, if a problem only gives you certain variables, that tells you what equation you can use. If it doesn't give you a variable or it doesn't indicate a variable, then you cannot use a certain certain equations. It eliminates certain equations to use. If they give you three initial pressure, volume, temperature, and then they give you a second pressure and a second volume, that's going to be five variables out of six total. Only one equation uses that. You follow? Follow me, follow me. Okay, good. So here's the first question. Um, you have two liters of gas is collected at 25 degrees Celsius and 7.5 millimeters of mercury. What is two liters, Terry? Two liters of... So which volume? V1. Tyler, what is 25 degrees Celsius? The temp and it needs to be? It's T1, yes, but what it needs to be is Kelvin. not Celsius. Kelvin. It needs to be in Kelvin, so we need to add it to 273. 273, cool. And uh, MMHG, what is that, Brody? Millimeters mercury is not a unit for volume. It's the pressure and it's the first one, so P1. Then it says, what is the volume at STP? What is what does the volume indicate, Corey? Volume indicates work. What is the phrase? What is the volume? What does that indicate? V2. V2 is what? 
When it says what is the volume, that means volume is unknown. V2 is unknown. Okay. Um, at STP, what does STP mean? Standard temperature and pressure? Standard temperature and pressure? Standard temperature and pressure? STP, you're supposed to say STP. Um, what is standard temperature? Okay, time out. Let's get back on track. Two liters is what? V1. Don't just say volume. It's not just volume. There's two different types of volume. What is 2.0 liters? V1. What is 25 degrees Celsius? T1, but it needs to be? Kelvin, so 298 Kelvin. What is 745 millimeters of mercury? That's P1. Cool. So we have all the ones. What does it mean when it says, what is the volume? So V2 is, we don't know. Questions? Yes? All right. What does STP mean? What does that mean for temperature? What? Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. That would be V, that would be a T2. But I mean, you. Says what is the volume? That's V2. At STP. Oh, oh, oh. The temperature and pressure with V2 would be T2 and P2. So when it says STP, loaded into STP, the phrase is the value for the standard temperature and the value for the standard pressure. Are you there? Not that. Why did I pick 760 millimeters of mercury? Because that's the standard pressure. And why did I choose it in millimeters of mercury, though? Because they have to match. Pressure, pressure units have to match. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Why is T2 273 Kelvin? That's the standard temperature. So STP tells you something. Everyone say STP tells you something. STP tells you the T. STP tells you the P. And then look, we can know it's the twos because it's saying along with the volume, V2, what it, here's T and P. Are you with me? So that STP tells me what I need to plug in. So we have the combo law. We plug in. We cross multiply. Or just rearrange. We go ahead and do some of the solving. They, they just went ahead and solved this whole side. This entire side has been solved. I say cross multiply and then solve. But either way. Then cross multiply they did. But it doesn't matter. They just plug this into the calculator first. And then they cross multiply. And then they divide and solve for the unit for the variable. And they get 1.8 liters. 6 figs are 3, so it should be 1.80. Are you stumped? Are you gone? Are you lost? What do you think about that? It's, you just got to plug it in, right? You just got to pick out the variables. There's five, it's just more variables. Just two more variables. Okay. Let's move on. Next problem 48 milliliters. What does that represent? Pally. That's V1 of ammonia gas at STP. What does that represent, Dorian? That tells you pressure and temperature. One or two? One, because we identified that one as one. So V1, so standard T is 273 Kelvin. And V was 48, and standard P is 101.3 kilopascals. Wait a minute. Why did we just choose 101.3 kilopascals? Why did we just go ahead and choose that one? Okay. 
So kilopascals has to match to kilopascals given in the problem. We have kilopascals given in the problem, so we need to match those units. Um, then it was says, what must be the new temperature? Oh, wait, it tells me 24 milliliters. What is that? V2. V2. And 110 kilopascals is P2. We don't know the temperature. There they all are. Shocking. Straightforward. All right, let's keep going. Oops. So this already appears to show the question already. But same facet, we plug all these things into the equation. We cross multiply, solve for the variable, and we get the answer to be uh, 148 Kelvin. But if we have to put it in degrees Celsius, we subtract 273, we get negative 125 degrees Celsius. Are you there? You plug it, you plug and jug. You plug and jug as, to, as is typical so far. So that's the combo gas law. It combines all of the variables. We're going to practice that soon too. And the last equation is the ideal gas law. I want to say ideal gas law. Pervnert. I will say pervnert. That's the equation. Pervnert. PV equals NRT. What does it mean when it says PV? Pressure volume. Pressure what volume? Pressure times volume. That's, that's telling you the math. Is equal to N times R times T. Now, we've seen PV and T already. What does N mean? No. N means the number of moles. So the only way, look, they'll either give you the number of moles or you have to convert a mass into moles using the molar mass. Now, where do we get the molar mass from? This is the simplest converting part of, of that of stoichiometry. So don't don't get it twisted. This is just a little recall, just frequently enough. And then R is called the universal gas constant, and it appears in two forms. What are the differences between each one? The units for. So what is that the units for? But what does that represent? What is those? Pressure. pressure. Those are the units for pressure. We need to make the units we use match the R value we use or what is desired. We need to make our pressure units match. Say that back to me. We need to make our pressure units match the R value. That's in the ideal gas law. This equation is also listed for you on your half sheet. PV equals NRT. It's there already. Let's do a practice problem. Let's see. Rose, calculate the pressure. What does that phrase tell us or mean? What? Yeah, what is that? When it says calculate the pressure, what does that mean is true of the problem? What do we plug in for pressure? No, we just plug in P because we don't know it. Cal when the problem says calculate the pressure, that means we're looking for what? P, pressure, yes? It's just like saying what is the, instead it just says calculate the. It's a command, not a question. That's the, that's the only difference. So calculate the pressure tells us and makes us think P equals question marks. That means we're going to plug in a variable Preferably the variable P because we don't know P. Let's just leave it as a P. P? Okay? Cool. Um, don't P, just K. Cool? Anyway. Um, in atmospheres, that tells us the units. And which R value do we use? The top one to match it. Atmosphere, the one with atmospheres in it. Of 0. 0.412 moles. What does that mean? That's the end number. At 16 degrees Celsius, what does that mean? The temperature, but it needs to be in Kelvin. And 3.25 liters, does that, do those units match the R constants? Liters, so I don't need to convert my liters. They all need to match the constant or match some form of the equation. So given question atmospheres, 3.25 liters, 
0.412 moles. 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. 289 Kelvin because degrees Celsius plus 273 gives me the Kelvin. PV equals NRT. How do I know I need to use that equation? Because they gave me moles. As soon as they give me moles, I need to use it to find the equation. So I think it was grams too. Exactly. Yep. Right. Grams means we need to use that equation too. We just have to convert into moles. What'd you say, Hannah? Okay. All right. Good deal. So P times 3.25 equals 0 0.412 times 0 0.0 or 0 0.0821 times 289. You just plug them all into the spots. Plug it in. Chug. Is this in the way a lot? Sorry, I'm going to go off to the side here. Yeah, just that. Just that upgrade. You could tell already? Just by looking at it? It's well, man. It's the most, it's the most important. It's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, plug it in, and we get 3.01 atmospheres. How do I know it's ATM? Because it's looking for it, and that the fact that it was looking for it means I needed to use that R value that had atmospheres in it. Bryson, what you got? What you thinking? So you're good to go then. You just haven't been paying attention. But go ahead, Bryson, what you, what you got? What's your question you got? You're good to go then. So you have no issues. Aiden, how you feel? Good to go? Faith, how we doing? You good? Sam? Okay, let's keep going. Another problem. Find the volume. What does that indicate, Destiny? Looking for V. V is question mark. 104.5 kilopascals. Why is that pressure? Kilopascals is the unit for? Pressure. 25 degrees Celsius. N is, wait a minute, is N 85 grams? We need to get it into moles of O2. Wait a minute. How many, what's the molar mass of oxygen? Of O2. 16, there's two of them. So 32 grams per mole. What? Oh, we're back to that again. I hate that. I don't even like Two moles from grams. Two moles from grams. Grams is the molar mass of O2. We just moles of O2. Well, we always need to be to one? We always need to be in moles because look, look at the next step. Sometimes they give it to you. To find the equation, if I have moles or grams involved, that means use PV equals NRT. And if we have to use PV equals NRT, we need to make sure it's N because N can only be that's moles. So we have to be in moles. So we had to do all this to get the given grams into moles to plug it into the N value. What did the R stand for again? R is the universal gas constant. Hmm. So then you'll always give us that? You'll always have that available for you to look at. Like I don't you won't have to memorize that number. I won't tell you which R to use, though. There's two R's. How do I know to use that R, not the other R? Because kilopascals is what my given pressure was in. They have to match. And in so doing that, that's the R I use that's accompanying that kilopascal set. The kilopascal is 
Okay, that's in on the sheet. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Where is she? Yep, T is 298 Kelvin. Remember, because we got to be in Kelvin. Plug in our numbers. Do some algebra. Solve for V. 64 liters. Are you there? All right, how are we doing? We good to go? What questions do you have? If you're if you're having any questions or any struggles in your mind, you need to ask your questions. What does not make sense? Where did I get this from? Why did I not? Why did I use that? Why did I not use this? Ask me because if you don't ask me, I assume you're good. So we'll multiply the three numbers and then you divide it by the difference. No. The reason why we use oxygen is because we had the mass of O2. And it would, and the problem, this, this will tell you, any mass they tell you, they want to say we have a mass of a gas. No. Nope. It'll say mass of specifically named gas. When they need you to use the molar mass. Because otherwise you, you would have to find, I guess it's really tough. You, I, mean, I don't know how you go about finding it. But they will provide it, nevertheless. So that should ease that fear. What else? These are great questions. Ella. That'll be on your rainbow pack. Yep. So you'll always have access to the R values. There'll be two options and you have to know to use to match the pressure units. But yes, you'll you'll have both of them. You'll have, to, you'll have them accessible to you. What else? Okay. So, oh, I don't know what happened to some of these, but um, some of these we already have written. Here's kind of a synopsis of all of the equations besides Dalton's Law. And while we use them, I think this next, last page actually has them all. Oh, here's some more. No, it's the same practice. Is that all these questions? This, yeah. these ones, yes. This live, what, what, I this I live it's on YouTube Live. I wanted to write on that slide right there. All right. And I'm, I'll fill in the other gaps. I don't know why it didn't include it in this case. But thanks for tuning in. That's it. The rest of the time is work time. We're going to work on the rest of these worksheets. All right. Go.